1992, I was teaching fourth grade and I showed a video on endangered species and watched my students sink lower and lower in their seats until it was done. And then one boy raised his hand and he said, Mrs. Rogers, what can we do to help endangered species? And that's when I looked at him and I knew I couldn't say, you know, let's write letters or let's do a study, that we really needed to do something big. Ready? Wiggle. And up. Nice. Ready? One, two, three. Push. Good. And then wiggle. I was a little uh, taken aback. I wasn't quite sure, you know, if I wanted to have a bunch of school kids coming out and uh, running around on my property. Freshwater shrimp, you know, what's that little thing? I never saw one of those, who cares? This is the last one. One, two, three. I don't think there's a lot of learning, especially with children this age, unless they're actually doing the projects themselves. Can you get in one more inch? Perfect. That's going to be a happy little treat. Okay. okay. Step on the Many times they'll say the work was hard, but it was fun. And then I'll ask them, well, why? Why did we do this today? What was the point of all this hard work? And they'll say, to help animals. Okay. Yeah. Well, what kind of plants do you have? Really easy. We have the only one. Yeah. We do. We got the idea to adopt a species, the California freshwater shrimp, and uh, brainstormed ways to help them. And one of the best ways to help them was to restore their habitat. The very first time the kids came out, we were really unorganized. We really didn't know what we were getting into. I don't think the kids knew what they were getting into. It, it was uh, really fun. We had a great time. And to tell you the truth, Paul has tremendous courage. And so he took a chance on us. Everything bloomed from there. So what started on Paul Martin's ranch is one restoration that was done 15 years ago and now is a virtual forest is now being connected one landowner at a time up and down that watershed. The entire two miles of creek has been revegetated by kids. These ladies will probably come up to here in five years. Some of the willows will probably be really high because they grow fast. I just go crazy when people say something like it's a cute project or a feel-good project. That makes me go crazy. I think one of the most important things about the project is that we take the work seriously and we take the students seriously. Don't pull the stem. Don't pull it. Pull it back. Here it comes. Push. Oh, good. You can point to streams that they started 10 years ago in the straw program that now have a full canopy of oaks and cottonwoods and maple trees all over them that started with little sticks in the ground. When we first started, there was only four or five species of birds that lived out in the creek. And from what I understand, the last survey they did, there was 28 different species out there. The straw children that come and do the plantings are um, just really integral to our feeling that we're part of a bigger community. What do you think of this project? I'm sure. Wonderful. It's fun. <laughs> straw is a community program, but it also puts schools as hubs of community. The dedication comes from the context that's created in the classroom. To have them actually outside in the environment seeing what I'm talking about is what's going to stay with them forever. We actually did a survey of the original kids as they were leaving college. And they do have a true feeling of empowerment that they actually said, many of them, that it could be traced back to their fourth grade experience. Some people in the world might be lazier than others, so we have to do it or else. Most people wouldn't do it. This will follow them through life. They've made a difference here, and they'll know that they can make a difference in lots of different areas, and that's really what I think the most important thing that we're giving them is that they're going to be able to hold on to that feeling of empowerment.